Lumex Group has been tremendous, uh, going tremendous uh, uh, job in terms of automotive lighting, and uh, they have another company also automotive technology that uh, uh, does a lot of components for auto parts. I have here with me Mr. Deepak Jain, managing director for the group, to talk about company's plan and also give a perspective of the industry. Uh, Mr. Jain, welcome to ETO. Thank you very much, Nabil. Uh, the, the government has called up uh, uh, Make in India campaign, and uh, you are being a major part into manufacturing industry. How do you see this campaign impacting over the last one year? I think first and foremost, I must compliment uh, the government. I think the Make in campaign, Make in India campaign, is a much, much required campaign because to really get the economy growing, we need an impetus on manufacturing. And Make in India puts the automotive space as one of the core sectors to uh, get this growth going. Um, I think today and yesterday in the Siam and ACMA AGMs, uh, Make in India was much debated upon uh, the opportunities, challenges. So fundamentally, we are uh, very pro Make in India. Uh, we feel that there is going to be a huge growth opportunity. Last three years, obviously, the industry had witnessed a stagnation. I would not call it too much a slowdown, but definitely a stagnation on it, not up to the expectations. But that gave us, the auto component guys, an opportunity because three years before, a lot of the auto component guys had invested money for expansion of capacities. And now, when we see, and there is an optimism in the industry that the volume would grow, uh, we can utilize these capacities to service this growth. So I think we're in a sweet spot, and Make in India itself as an initiative has uh, put India on a global map. We already, being part of the auto space, we are in a globally supply integrated chain. Uh, so we feel that there is good opportunity for growth. With the Modi government coming in, uh, there was a lot of positive sentiment in the industry. It's been around one and a half years now. Uh, do you see any improvement in terms of investment in India in automotive industry and overall scenario? I think uh, fundamentally, Make in India, one of the key focus areas was to facilitate investments. But obviously, India has still a long way to go. Uh, you know, the Skill India campaign, the digital campaign, but more importantly, the ease of doing business. Uh, that, I think, needs to kickstart off. Make in India, although, as I said, gives a lot of opportunities for growth, it definitely comes with its own challenges. The most visible challenge we see is the infrastructure, right? Uh, there are obviously congestions, there are uh, ports, there are issues on roads, uh, there is a power deficit in the country. Uh, so that is definitely a big challenge. And also, I mean, say it was very disappointing that we could not basically get the GST off track. And I hope that in the next parliament session, I mean, so that's uh, one of the key focus areas, and hopefully we get the GST in place. Uh, said that, I think another key challenge is the employment, labor, and also the Skill India challenge. Because with this growth opportunity, uh, in Make in India, we are, the AMP clearly talks about almost adding 65 million jobs. Right? If that, and we are a young demographic country. With that, I think Skill India becomes extremely, extremely important. So every company, at least in the auto industry, is trying to make its own plans for doing the skill. But there is obviously the ASDC, the National Skill Development Commission. If everything focuses on these things, I'm sure looking into the pipeline in the future, we would be emerging uh, you know, winners and make in India will become actually a reality. Today, O Suzuki spoke about quality make in India. And I think one of the key impetus is quality, because today we are no more domestic companies. We have a global opportunity. And for that, to capture a global opportunity, we need to put in investments in processes, in people, in management systems, and in products, and also technology to make the quality right. First time right, every time right. And that basically is also another challenge. Uh, we have seen that uh, there, there, there is some subdued uh, sentiment as well. We will not say that there is always a very positive if we see the overall industry. Uh, do you think somewhere there has been a delay in implementation of the changes that the government has made or the policy announcements that is impacting the investors? I think we have to see it in two ways. Uh, one is short term and the other is long term. Uh, I would talk more on the long term because we are, the sentiment is positive long term. 
of course, Amisa, you know, there is volatility in the system. Um, you know, currency exchange, Amisa, of, of course, the Chinese currency depreciating, uh, Amisa, it impacts globally and also, of course, India. Uh, but I think fundamentally, we need to be focused and have faith in the system. Um, I feel there would be buoyancy. Yes, if you see across the segments, some segments have performed better than the other segment. I expect that at least a close first double digit performance should come in across the industry and that should give the base for the next flight. Uh, I think penetration levels are low still in the um, country for the automotive space and that again gives us an opportunity for growth. Uh, I just mentioned about your own devaluation. Do you think this gives an opportunity for India to attract more investment? Uh, I think in terms of investments, yes. Uh, you know, it all depends how this comes. We, I, I don't think anyone globally is in favor of currency wars. But if you see again today, India is in a much more better spot as compared to its global peers. Uh, you know, rupee, uh, obviously there is depreciation in the rupee. Uh, also, I mean, say the commodity prices have softened. Oil prices are actually at all-time low. Uh, these three factors have actually created, uh, I mean, say better positioning uh, for the Indian economy. And that also directly impacts the investment favor. That also impacts basically the industry. Uh, as I said before, ease of doing business, that's one of the top concerns. Uh, government is committed by some plan, but we need to see good action uh, and consistent action on ground uh, so that we can again call in for investments from this thing. So FDIs, I think that's probably one of the biggest concerns. I also hope that it's not just FIIs, but f actually FDIs, which come into India, and that helps to build it. How do you see Matt? The government, ha the, the minister has recently announced that they are considering that they will lift it. Do, do you see any kind of positive impact on uh, uh, automotive industry from this? Uh, I mean, so definitely, but I think more importantly for me is the GST. Uh, you know, if the goods services tax that comes in, I mean, so that gives an impetus straight away. So if you look at it from a taxation point of view, I think everyone is hoping um, and looking forward for what the government had committed to deliver on that. Uh, uh, we heard Mr. O. Suzuki mentioning about doing quality make in India. But when it comes to auto component industry, tier ones are still better. But the small players, they are still left behind somehow. They need a lot of hand holding. They need a lot of support. How, how uh, industry and government is planning to, you know, facilitate that? I think first I'll speak about the industry. Um, I think tier two, tier three, and tier ones, I think quality is not one person's responsibility. We are part of the integrated supply chain. However, as our OEMs, uh, say 30 years before, let's we talked about Suzuki Motors, Maruti Suzuki when it started, they actually took all their tier ones hand in hand and put in enormous resources to actually develop the tier ones, be it on technology partnerships, be it on quality processes, product processes. They actually taught us how to grow. I think as tier ones, we have the ownership to also develop the, our own supply chain, tier twos and three of these. I think the task is enormous. However, if we want to achieve global quality, we won't be able to do unless we integrate our supply chain and make sure that everyone does his job, tier twos and three of these. It's not the OEM responsibility, it's tier one's responsibility clearly to do that. And it's not just Maruti Suzuki, every other customer is hand-holding tier ones, and tier twos, three or threes, tier ones need to do that. So if we are able to make this chain and create a quality impact, because today the end impact is we should not, safety, quality, uh, the most critical thing, and it should not impact the end consumer. And that's a responsibility of the auto industry, which we do. As far as the government is concerned, uh, I think they, should institutionalize more and more um, programs for the SMEs uh, so that they are able to, you know, get more good capital. They're able to, uh, you know, also make and leverage, uh, you know, not because of the resource in terms of management, capital, lack of that, uh, they're not able to give quality. So I think it's a both way thing. Industry and the government have to work in tandem to really uplift this quality in the Make in India campaign. Do 
you think uh, the government need to redefine the uh, SMEs in terms of value also? Because you see a very small company like uh, uh, is in under SME, they are getting help, they are getting subsidy, capital on certain uh, advantage. But once they become uh, 500 crore, 600 crore, they, they do not get that. So do you think the size of the SME needs to be redefined? Because in outside India, we see the different definitions. I think when you look at SMEs, and if I talk in the auto context, uh, I think the most critical part is the management bandwidth, as well as the, there are certain hygiene factors. As the auto component guys, we must have to deliver to the quality expectation of the customer. I think definitely scale will help in doing that. Um, and it's not about just SMEs. I think it all depends on after you build certain scale. So from my perspective, if the auto comp guys want to do and continue to make global quality for the manufacturers here, we need to be very clear that we should have a separate hygiene factor. And it's very simple. It should be about people. It should be processes. It should be about tooling. It should be about uh, technology. Uh, it should be about quality. Uh, and if you're able to get that, and all these hygiene factors take a certain cost. And for that cost to be validated, it needs a certain scale for that. So I think we have probably had a lot of disintegration in the supply chain. And we need to fundamentally look at the basics and try to give opportunity to scale up to our tier two and tier threes uh, so that we are able to commit on the quality. How do you see this, uh, you know, uh, the growth if you see short-term growth for the industry, what's your projection? Uh, this is my personal view. I think that as an overall industry in this year, we should actually hit about double digit, but I mean, so let's say low double digit as such. So first and foremost, if we are able to hit that, it forms a good basis of growth, right? And uh, again, it all depends on various sectors. Uh, but I think passenger cars, the scooter space, that should actually definitely be pulling up the growth. Uh, we still feel some laggard growth behind the CV space and the ag space. Uh, but uh, again, uh, this is just a short term. Uh, I think medium term, we are much more robust. Uh, what would be the current level of uh, utilization, uh, capacity utilization, overall industry, if we see the auto component industry? And can you give us some uh, uh, guidance on Lumex Group and what are plan for your company? I think our auto component guys, I think there is definitely flux of capacities, but again, it all depends on makers, it all depends on OEMs. Some OEMs, as you know, are investing further, some OEMs are utilizing the existing capacity, some are closing down. So it's it's a mixed play, right? I can talk more about Lumax. Uh, in terms of Lumax has two uh, entities in the listed space. Uh, we have Lumax Industries, we have Lumax Auto Technologies. In Lumax Industries, we're actually at a capacity utilization of about 80%. Uh, and I think that's a good sign because we are pretty much poised down where now the growth comes in. We're able to capture in our current existing manufacturing units. Of course, we will be improving productivity and focus would be there also to fine tune certain bottlenecks in the brownfield projects. Our focus there is clearly technology. We see a huge shift on technology which will help us and the consumer and the customer uh, because the lighting technology is going from plastics to LEDs. You'll see more and more LEDs in all segments coming through. And the company is scaling up in terms of that competence uh, locally because we fundamentally believe we, we have a 31-year relationship with Stanley Electric of Japan. It's a global leader in lighting. But we fundamentally believe that our strength is to give affordable technology and appropriate technology and timely technology for our customers in India. So that's what we are putting in. So we're building in skills for catering to the LED market, which will be the growth opportunity. And in Lumax Auto Technologies, uh, there are multiple product lines which we are doing. And we're pretty bullish on that company. We expect that company to have about 18 to 20 percent growth this year itself. And going forward, maybe CAGR growth of almost about similar 18 percent in the next four to five years. And this fundamentally because it's done new joint ventures, and that will also boost in revenues, kickstart revenues in the next few quarters coming through. Uh, what kind of investment plan you have for this and long term period? I think in Lumex Auto Technologies, we're investing, our target is, let's say, in a 2020-21, in the next say, five years outplay, we're expecting about 
a 250 crore outlay on the investments. And that should hopefully give us about 4.5x growth. Uh, when I say 4.5x, in terms of the investment what we've put in. Um, so we're expecting, again, a CAGR of 18% top line uh, currently from the current levels in the next four or five years with an investment of 250 crores in the next that same period. In Lumax Industries, uh, I think there are more technology focus and R&D focus in our company. We already have a 60% market share. So we will be putting in tandem with our customers. So there, I think the growth would be more in line with what the industry growth is and a little bit more added because the minor model changes come in, the LED technology come in. So we're expecting about a 13% growth CAGR for the next four or five years. And of course, investment would not be that significant. We would be using our internal accruals. And we already have in all basically production sites of a customer, we already have facilities. So we just need to now productionize and make it brownfield. What kind of, you know, uh, the uh, top line you expect by 2020 or 25? Currently, the group, at a group level, we are uh, basically at 2,200 crores, and we expect this top line to go about 2x in five years, and this is all basically on organic growth. Uh, again, uh, we are not, as of now, looking at inorganic growth, but as I said, we are now in a global scale. It all depends on our first point is to follow our customer. So we'll be engaging with a customer. And in that, if any inorganic growth opportunities come, we will do that. So that's the top line we're talking about, a 2x, 2.5x from the current level of about 2,200 crores. Uh, what about uh, uh, setting up shops outside India also? If suppose a customer asks you, you will do that? We will evaluate based on our customer request. And as I said, our clear agenda is follow customer. We are very clear that we are in a B2C business, and when a customer will tell, a B2B business, sorry, and uh, when a customer will tell us if it's the rightful opportunity, uh, we will invest. One last question. Uh, what is your breakup between uh, domestic and uh, exports market, and how do you see it to be? What? So we are largely a domestic player. As a, at a group level, we are at about 93%, I mean, it's a domestic, 7% is exports. Um, and I think we also see consistent, basically, uh, things. So it should be somewhere around 90 to 10. This is what basically is there. Our export focus is fundamentally to sensitize our organization on basically the way to do business. And if we really would basically talk about it, let's say lighting is not a very export-friendly commodity, right? It's very fragile. It packs in a lot of air. But that's why we need to be close to the customer. And if I get a global opportunity, most likely we'll set up locations outside India and then basically. What about auto technology business? There, the other parts are manufactured. There you can enhance your exports? Yes, that's true. I mean, say there, there is much more opportunity to enhance exports. Currently, we are again doing about similar ratios on that company as well. I think one of the most interesting segment which is there in Lumax Auto Technologies is the retail segment. Uh, we do almost about 25% of the revenue comes in from retail market in India. And we expect that to be enhanced both India and globally. And that's one of the key areas where we were looking for that. Thank you so much for talking to me.